Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Aaron Steyer, I'm one of the physicians here at CCR in Boston Fertility. And I wanna welcome you to our presentation about nutritional approaches to optimize wellness and fertility. More than ever um, during this COVID pandemic, it's uh, patients really wanna see how they can prepare themselves when they can restart uh, treatments again. And many questions arise surrounding nutrition and supplements. And today I have Jennifer Redman, a certified integrative nutrition um, health coach um, who's here to talk with me about uh, really common questions and approaches to optimizing wellness and fertility in our population. Hi, Jennifer. How are you today? Hi, Dr. Steyer. I'm great. Really nice to be with you. Thank you for joining us today. I'm really happy to have you here. We've worked so much over the past several years with patients and had really great outcomes. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we have time to sit down and talk about this really important topic. Can you share with our audience um, a little bit about yourself and your practice? Sure. So like you said, I'm a certified integrated nutrition health coach, and I've worked in the infertility field for more than 15 years. And I help women with infertility really take a 360 degree view of their wellness so that they can boost their ability to conceive um, and really feel deeply supported and in control of their health. Um, I primarily work with women um, on, on a one-to-one -one program. That's great. That's great. You know, one of the most common thing questions that I get besides, you know, why am I not conceiving or why am I having issues is what can I do to help my fertility on my own? Whether it be exercise, whether it be my diet, whether it be certain things that you cut out of my diet. Can you walk us through what you, how you look at the relationship between diet and nutrition to wellness and fertility potential? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, like you just alluded to, fertility is really influenced by so many factors and modifications to nutrition, diet, lifestyle can definitely help improve fertility. Um, there are really a lot of clinical studies that have shown a correlation between improved diet, modified exercise, a greener lifestyle, and improved fertility. So I really help women, like I said, take this 360 degree view mm -hmm. of their fertility, um, sort of assess where they're at, and then make modifications to diet and lifestyle based on their individual goals. I mean, that's great. I mean, it really is correlate to what we do clinically in our fertility practice and looking at every single aspect of how it affects a woman's wellness as well as their ability to conceive. Um, we look at things such as the male and female uh, factors, if, if applicable, as well as um, other um, dietary habits and lifestyle um, habits as well, assessing multiple different factors. Can you walk us through um, what your initial consult looks like? What do you, what's important to assess for initially when you meet a patient in the office or virtually what you do? Yeah, definitely. So during our first meeting, which is generally a 60 to 90 minute meeting, mm -hmm. so it's pretty in depth, I really take a deep dive into a client's health history. That's something that they fill out in advance. Mm -hmm. So we talk about where they are in trying to conceive. And then we also talk about um, their overall health, past and present. Right. Um, we look at sleep, lifestyle habits, exercise, um, the foods that they're eating, and even hobbies and relationships. And then when we start working together, we generally always start with the food piece. What are you eating? Mm -hmm. um, how is that supporting your body and your fertility? Or how is that not supporting your body and fertility? And then once we get a good handle on that, and my clients are in a good routine with that and have established some new patterns, mm -hmm. then we move on to those other areas that I've mentioned. That's great. I mean, I think that I really get a very common thing. So what should I be avoiding? What should I be eating more of? And mm -hmm. you put it really well. It's, it's not just one silver bullet or one magical um, right. food or food group. Um, you mentioned sleep. I'm sure you, you probably see stress as a, another mm -hmm. factor. And you mentioned relationships too, which I think is also something to, to consider. I think a lot of folks who are, who are suffering from infertility, sometimes don't realize how much of a strain puts on their personal as well as professional relationships. So it's great that you look at all these things together. Um, one thing, a common thing that I, I'm asked is, well, what are potential things that are, may have um, adverse effects um, to my fertility? What are the common pitfalls or adverse habits you observe in, in your clients? Sure. So um, as you mentioned, there isn't really a silver bullet, right? So people mm -hmm. get really hung up on a specific diet. They think, oh gosh, should I be paleo or should I be 
mm-hmm. keto? Should I be vegan? Like they're just trying to do all the things. Yeah. And as you mentioned, that's just one of the things that's stressing them out. And that stress piece is really not good for fertility. So that said, you know, diet is really important. And there mm-hmm. are things we can do to optimize your diet to optimize fertility. It's just not one size fits all. Mm-hmm. So I believe in something called bioindividuality, which really oh, means taking the individual person, the individual situation into account mm-hmm. and, and helping somebody to develop a protocol based on that. Okay, great. Um, you mentioned different diets, paleo, vegan. Um, there's a lot of some studies actually recent in great journals looking at intermittent fasting. And so can you comment a little bit on the relationship of intermittent fasting in a fertility population, what you've seen in your practice and what you, the people have asked you, what, what do you comment when, you, when people talk about, is this going to be helpful to me or not in my journey for fertility? Sure. So I think that's a great question. Intermittent fasting is super popular right now. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it goes back to the individual. Um, intermittent fasting is um, really great for inflammation Mm -hmm. in a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So that can be super helpful when you're dealing with fertility. Um, Having said that, if somebody has PCOS, Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily work for all people because Mm -hmm. with PCOS, you wanna have a lot of smaller meals that have Mm -hmm. protein in every meal. So again, it's really individualized, but some people do have good success with intermittent fasting. Yeah, I've signed some of my patients who have endometriosis or also have colitis or Crohn's disease, which are inflammatory by definition, seem to do better with intermittent fasting. So it's great to hear that you find with inflammation that it may be um, something that uh, can improve symptoms and hopefully improve fertility. So that's great. Yeah, like you said, there are definitely some really good studies on that. Yeah. I tend to refer to those um, definitely. Now. After assessing a patient and or a client and looking at things that could be optimized, you know, I always look at with my patients treatment goals. What are our goals, whether it be pregnancy, whether it be egg freezing, whether it be reducing their chance for miscarriage, um, whether it be optimizing their response to IVF or to insemination cycles. Can you lay out how your treatment goals are um, in your practice and how and how you approach this with patients? Yeah, definitely. So um just like you, you know, when we do that initial um, consultation, when I take that deep dive into the health history, um, naturally what their goal is for their fertility um, mm-hmm. definitely comes into account, whether it's egg freezing or um, managing PCOS mm-hmm. or doing an IVF cycle. So, so to start, you know, I really want to get that 360 degree mm-hmm. view of their wellness. Mm-hmm. And then based on the individual situation, Um, I help the client to really prioritize their goals. Mm -hmm. So that could include things like um, balancing blood sugar to give you Mm -hmm. more energy and reduce cravings. It Mm -hmm. might be um, balancing hormones to help regulate cycles. Um, That stress piece that we talked about um, and to help them feel supported. Um, Developing a greener lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then also um, it's super important to adapt an exercise or a movement routine that addresses, um, again, that personal health fertility goal that um, the client has in mind. So it's taking that um, holistic approach. Yeah, I find that especially the exercise piece, it's it's definitely synergistic to nutrition. And I think they go hand in hand. There's so many options, whether it be your local yeah, health club or whether it be your newly purchased Peloton is time we're all social distancing. Do you find that there's any specific exercises that are more interesting than others with nutrition or are they all pretty much the same as long as they're aerobic exercise? Um, so again, it depends on the person. So if the, mm-hmm. if the individual's goals are um, to lose weight or if it's a woman who's super active and really athletic and mm-hmm. maybe needs to gain some weight, it's going to yes. kind of depend on that. In general, you know, we want to look at exercises that are um, supportive and expansive Mm -hmm. rather than really constrictive. We want to look at exercises that, um, right, so when you have stress on your body, which we talked about earlier, you know, your body might not necessarily understand just regular stressors and um, the stress of, say, running a eight minute mile, right? That can mm-hmm. put your body into that sort of fight. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so we want to look at exercises that are going to be more supportive um, and gentler on your system, even if you're, you're um, trying to lose weight. 
That's great. That's great. Now, looking at your overall toolbox or toolkit of foods, recommended things that are for dietary uh, benefit, can you walk us through really what you see as the high impact, uh, you know, high yield, high success foods that you recommend um, for the average person coming in to see you who has fertility concerns, who wants to learn about nutrition? Definitely, definitely. So I definitely encourage a diet that's higher in plant protein than mm -hmm. animal protein. Mm -hmm. um, studies have shown that that's better for fertility. Um, definitely relying on fresh whole foods um, rather than packaged foods. Yeah. Um, a diet high in fruits and vegetables. Um, mm. Raspberries and blueberries, for example, are super high in antioxidants. Yeah. And dark leafy greens have a ton of nutritional value. So really mm. focusing a lot of those fruits and vegetables throughout the day and on your plate. Mm -hmm. um, whole grains, preferably gluten-free. Um, things like beans, legumes, so like lentils, chickpeas, peas, oh, and great. then foods high in omega-3 and omega-6 mm -hmm. fatty acids, so that would be like salmon and other fatty fish, um, flax seeds, and, and really what I do is I help clients to understand and learn which foods best support their bodies. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of things you mentioned go along with the Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. That's something that's been seen for many, many decades as being beneficial. Can you walk us through typical Mediterranean diet? Because I see a lot of patients of mine really implementing that and, and doing very well. Yeah. So it's actually a lot of what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, mostly whole foods. So those fruits and vegetables. It's lean proteins, mm -hmm. it's um, more fish, less yeah. poultry, even less red meat. Wow. And if we're going to talk about the lessers, um, really no junk food. Um, <laughs> it's high in um, whole grains, um, beans, and those omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. That's a great model to follow. That's great. Yeah, there's so many, many, many studies looking at the benefit. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen many folks who actually have implemented this and done, have done well and lost weight and actually have reduced their uh, cholesterol and their triglycerides. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, something I think for folks to really pay attention to. Yeah, it's um, really a great whole body diet, yeah. not just for fertility. Are there certain things to really just avoid or stay away from? I, are there specific things you say, like, look, this is not helping you at all? and really just say, just try to really re cut this out completely from your diet at this point in time. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, something that maybe a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. is that studies have shown that consuming produce, we're talking a lot about fruits and vegetables, right? But consuming produce that's high in pesticides can oh. reduce fertility. Yes. Um, there is a really great tool, um, an app, or you can look it up on your um, laptop, it's called um, ewg.org, the Environmental Working Group, and they have two lists. One's called the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen, and oh, that nice. really helps you identify um, which fruits and vegetables are highest and lowest in pesticides. So that's a big thing. Yeah. Um, as far as other things to try and avoid, uh, gluten is one of the mm -hmm. eight most common allergens mm -hmm. and can cause inflammation. So we're not talking about celiac disease here, but we're talking about a gluten sensitivity. Yes. Um, trans fats are found in a lot of processed snack foods, um, french fries even, those should be avoided. And then um, a couple other things are processed carbs. So that's, you know, your white flour, things yes. like cookies, cakes, white bread. Um, those convert to blood sugar quickly, um, which releases insulin and some people can inhibit ov ovulation. Mm -hmm. And then sugar. Um, sugar can really wreak havoc on your body and it can interfere with, um, in some cases, interfere with the egg's ability to mature and ovulate. So I think those are some really um, important ones to take a look at how right. how much a role they play in your yeah. everyday diet and nutrition. What's your sense of the impact of artificial sweeteners? I think a lot of us try not to use regular sugar and we'll use, I won't name the names, but certain right. artificial sweeteners in our right. coffee or in our other kind of drinks. Can, can you give us a sense of the nutritional impact of those on just metabolism and, and, and health in general? Yeah, um, so, 
you know, I come from a place that's, you know, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they're processed. They have chemicals. You know, you yes. they have in, in a lot. Of, and again, we don't want to name names, but they could have um, um, endocrine disruptors in mm -hmm. them because they're, chemi they're chemically based. So um, there are some good natural substitutes to sugar, even maple syrup or honey or dates. Um, you know, all can give you that sweetness, but without a processed sugar or sugar substitute um, in your diet. That's good to know. Well, this has been so helpful, Jennifer. Thanks so much for sharing your expertise today. I think that many of our patients really have several, many questions about nutrition. And unfortunately, I can only answer like 1% of the questions. So I'm glad that we've been able to partner together over the past several years to help patients understand, as you put it, the 360 degree approach, which I think is always the best approach. Mobile team players really helping um, patients have the best success. Can you summarize for us is really the big points of, of, of nutrition for fertility so folks who are watching really have a, some take home messages here? Sure, sure. I can give you a few kind of real succinct things yeah. to kind of give you this overall view. Um, I think the first thing is I like to tell my clients to eat a rainbow of food. That's a good way to kind mm -hmm. of think I like about that rainbow, that. yeah. All the colors, then you're going to be getting a variety of nutrients. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely focus more on plant-based protein as opposed to animal protein. Um, limit processed and packaged food and really focus on those fresh whole foods. Um, as you mentioned, the Mediterranean diet yeah. is a really good model. And um, last but not least, um, stay hydrated. You know, it's good yeah. for all your cells and organs. Um, so that's just a good takeaway. Something I tell my clients to aim for is half their body weight in mm -hmm. ounces of water. Um, but that hydration is a big piece that's gonna keep all your cells and organs healthy. Great, and the, the hydration piece, besides water, any other recommended things that people should drink that are uh, good physiologically and also from a nutrition standpoint? Sure, definitely. So um, I would definitely say to try and stay away from those sugary drinks and mm -hmm. beverages, so whether that's sodas or energy drinks, things like that. Um, so water, um, herbal teas, um, uh, what was the other one I was just gonna say? Water, herbal teas, oh, and then think about those foods that are like wet or juicy. So they have a lot of fluid like in them, yeah. Fruits or okay. soups, um, things like that all have um, a lot of hydration in them. That's great. Well, thanks so much again, Jennifer, for joining us. And everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I think that in these times of really uh, waiting for when fertility treatments uh, will begin again, there's so many things we can do to, you can do to prepare yourself to be to have the most optimal treatment outcomes and success, including paying attention to your diet, nutrition, and supplements. And again, I want to thank Jennifer for really providing um, so many um, pearls and great um, uh, notations of really what to do best to really optimize nutrition and hopefully see success soon. So thanks everyone and be safe. Great, thank you. Thank you.